Welcome to this installment of the TI Precision Lab series on motor drivers. My name is Pablo Ahmed, and in this presentation, I'll be going over current sensing and how it can be used to regulate current in a motor driver system. Let's begin by discussing what exactly is current sensing. Current sensing is any technique that is used to monitor and measure the current through a load. In brushed and stepper motor applications, this current regulation can be used to monitor load condition changes and for regulating the motor winding current. Current sensing can also be used as feedback and advanced control methods, such as current control systems and field-oriented control applications. Typical current sensing topologies include high side, low side, and end-line current sensing. All of these topologies use a shunt resistor, which generates a small voltage drop that is proportional to the current flowing through the resistor. The voltage drop across the resistor can be amplified by a current sense amplifier so that it can be measured with a voltmeter or read by an ADC channel of a microcontroller. The biggest difference between these topologies is that the inline current sensing method is capable of measuring the motor current during the decay phase of the H bridge. During the decay phase, the motor winding current can either be recirculated between the bottom FETs, which is called low side recirculation. The winding current can also recirculate between the two high side FETs, which is called high side recirculation. The image to the right shows the current paths for both high side and low side recirculation. As you can see, no current flows through the high side or low side shunt resistors during this period. So no current sensing will be possible during this period. However, current sensing is possible with inline sensing. I have included some resources at the end of this presentation if you wish to learn more about these three current sensing topologies. In motor driver systems, current sensing can be used to monitor the current through the motor winding and to regulate the motor startup and stall currents. This process of limiting the current of a motor is called current regulation. I will talk more about current regulation in the next slide. As mentioned in the previous slide, current regulation is used in motor drivers to limit the current at a fixed value. Regulating current in motor drivers is very important to ensure the motor operates below a current level that is safe for the motor system. During initial startup and brushed DC motors, for example, there is always high end rush current. This end rush current can potentially damage the motor and the motor driver. The end rush current can also drain unnecessary power, which is not ideal for battery powered applications. Motor drivers with current regulation circuitry can limit this end rush current and eliminate the issues which I just mentioned. The figure on the top right shows a waveform of the motor current during initial startup, nominal operation, and motor stall. A motor stalls when it encounters an obstacle preventing it from spinning. When this occurs, the motor's back EMF will decrease, causing the motor current to increase. To learn more about motor stall, please view the TRPL listed in the resources slide. As it can be seen in the waveform, the enrich current and stall current is regulated at the current limit labeled I-trip. The figure in the bottom right corner shows a black diagram of a typical current regulation circuit. The first stage consists of a sense resistor that generates a small voltage drop proportional to the motor winding current. The voltage is then amplified by a differential amplifier. The second stage is composed of a comparator that compares the motor winding current in volts to a user set reference voltage. The reference voltage will set the current regulation trip limit, which is called I-trip. The higher the reference voltage, the higher the current limit threshold, and vice versa. The driver will go into current regulation mode, also called current chopping, once the winding current is above the current regulation limit set by V-ref. I will talk more about the current regulation process in the next slide. Let's talk about how current regulation works. On the apple current, which is the current flowing through the edge bridge FETs, the motor, 
and the send resistor is below the I prep limit, the edge bridge is in its driving phase. During this period, current flows from the power supply to the edge bridge ground passing through the top FET, motor, bottom FET, and the send resistor. The current in the motor windings will increase until it reaches the I trip limit. The driving phase is highlighted in green on the bottom right waveform. Once the output current reaches the I trip limit, the driver will set the edge bridge to a decay phase. During the decay phase, the winding current will circulate between the motor winding and the bottom two FETs. Note that this example uses a low side sensing topology, so no current flows through the sense resistor, making current sensing not possible during this period. The decay phase is highlighted in red on the waveform. The edge bridge will be in the decay phase for a fixed period of time, which is labeled T off on the waveform. The edge bridge will alternate between the driving and decay phase until the output current stays below the current regulation limit or the control input is set low. The current regulation scheme that I just described is called fixed off time regulation since the decay phase lasts for a fixed period of time. However, there exists another regulation scheme called cycle by cycle regulation. In this scheme, the decay phase lasts until the next control input edge rise. The waveform in the bottom left shows an example of a cycle by cycle regulation scheme. The green regions are the driving phases and the red regions are the decay phases. Note that the yellow region, although it is a decay phase, it is not part of the current regulation process since the output current is below the I trip limit during this time. The edge bridge is in the decay phase due to the control input going low. Since cycle by cycle regulation relies on the controlled input edge rise, it cannot support current regulation for 100% duty cycle control. However, an advantage of the cycle by cycle scheme is that it allows for further current regulation flexibility by adjusting the current input frequency and duty cycle. The sensing method that I described in the previous slide uses a shunt resistor in the low side of the edge bridge between the sources of the bottom FETs and the ground pad. This sensing method is often referred to as external current sensing since the shunt resistor is not integrated in the motor driver IC. There is another sensing method called integrated current sensing. This sensing method integrates a current mirror in the driver IC to measure the motor current which eliminates the need for a bulky shunt resistor. I will describe the integrated current sensing method in more detail in the following slide. This table shows some of the major differences between the external and integrated current sensing methods for certain technical considerations. One main advantage of the integrated method is that it eliminates the need for a shunt resistor, which helps reduce the board size and heat dissipation. Low heat dissipation will help maintain the board running at much lower temperatures. Another disadvantage of the external method is not allowing current monitoring during the edge bridge decay phase. However, the current mirror architecture allows for current sensing even during the decay phase, as I will describe in the following slide. An advantage of the external method is better sensing and accuracy. Since the sensing accuracy depends on the amplifier and the shunt resistor tolerance, choosing an amplifier with high accuracy and a shunt resistor with low tolerances can increase the current sensing accuracy. On the other hand, the current mirror accuracy is fixed. Therefore, designers will need to determine if the accuracy is acceptable for their system. The other, the other advantage of the integrated sensing is that there is no additional impedance on the path of the motor current, since there is no shunt resistor in series with the edge bridge. This is going to prevent the motor current getting low during low battery conditions, and is going to increase the effective battery lifetime and battery powered applications. TIA offers motor drivers with integrated current sensing, which you can browse on the TI.com website. Traditionally, current sensing in motor drivers is achieved using external shunt resistors, which is called external current sensing. However, there is another way to sense current without, without the need of a bulky shunt resistor. This is what's called integrated current sensing. The image on the right shows a black diagram of a motor driver with integrated current sensing. 
Integrated current sensing uses a current mirror circuit to measure the load current, which is scaled by the current mirror scaling factor. The output of the internal current sense circuitry flows through the external IPROPI resistor, generating a voltage proportional to the load current. This proportional voltage, or VIPROPI, is fed to the comparator of the internal current regulation circuit. VIPROPI can also be read by an MCU for further closed loop feedback control. On the other hand, motor drivers with external current sensing require a high power shunt resistor, which are typically 25, 12 in size, and an external current sensing amplifier for current feedback. The figure on the right shows a black diagram of a motor driver with external current sensing. The integrated current sensing method has many advantages over the external method. The main advantage is that the external resistor, R apropi, is much smaller in size than the shunt resistor, R sense. Since much less current flows to the apropi resistor, the resistor can be much smaller compared to the shunt resistor, which has to dissipate more current. Another advantage is board size reduction. The two images on the bottom right shows a side-by-side -side comparison of the PCB area of the IC and the external resistor for both current sensing methods. As you can see, the board area can be greatly reduced by eliminating the big sense resistor. Another advantage is PCB design simplification. Removing the shunt resistor can simplify the PCB trace routing. Lastly, internal current sensing allows for current monitoring during the decay phase since the current mirror is used to measure the current. External sensing only uses a shunt resistor to measure current, which does not allow for current sensing during the decay phase, as explained in the previous slide. Current regulation is often confused with overcurrent protection, which is, which is a safety feature found in most of Texas Instruments motor drivers. I want to take some time to talk about the differences between these two techniques to clear any confusion. Current regulation, as I have described in the previous slides, limits the output current to a fixed value to protect the motor from excess current, which often occurs during startup and high torque events, such as when the motor stalls. It is not meant to protect the driver IC in the case of very high current spikes. On the other hand, overcurrent protection is a safety feature that constantly monitors the current through each of the edge bridge FETs and disables each of the FETs in the case of very large currents. For example, when there is a short between the outputs or either a supply or ground short on any of the output terminals, there will be a very large current flowing through the FETs in the motor. OCP will protect the motor driver by disabling the FETs when the current spikes are detected. There is an article listed in the resources slide at the end of, the, at the end of this presentation that explains in more detail the differences between current regulation and OCP. Feel free to read if you wish to learn more. Thank you for viewing this installment of the TI Position Lab series on motor drivers. To learn more about the topics that were discussed in this video, please take a look at the resources slide for more information. Also, to learn more about motor drivers, technical resources, and browse Texas Instruments catalog of motor driver products, please view the motor driver product page on ti.com.